Polygon. You know it as Matic. Today, we're going to break it down and get inside this coin because I think it's an interesting one to watch and one I think you're going to want to hear about. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. Thanks for being a subscriber if you are. And of course, if you're not, what's going on, man? We need you as a subscriber. You're going to get great insights, downloads, research, and a lot of entertainment, I think, that's going to help you through your day on anything from EVs, AI, cryptocurrency, and of course, autonomy. Those are the kind of the topics we talk about here. Let's jump into today the topic of Polygon, because Polygon is one of those uh, in full disclosure, I own Polygon. I like it. I'm not a huge investor in it, but I am one that likes the DeFi project in general. But if you are watching Polygon, there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of movement happening in the space. And I want to get into that today on a little bit more detail than we'll do a st an analysis of the token and then kind of give you some alignment on whether or not this is moving to the next direction. Now, remember, we do these market movers. This is kind of our market mover series on cryptocurrency. And basically what it is, is we compile a bunch of news stories, we put a layer of data with it, and then we deliver something to you. Hopefully it gives you a direction on your own research. However, this is not financial advice, so don't take it that way. We do this research on our own. We use our own tool sets, our own data sets. We want you to do the same. And the, the one thing I always recommend to all of our viewers and listeners, especially around mainstream media, this is the thing that is most important, is as you guys know, over the past few weeks, we've seen a lot of FUD on cryptocurrency, especially on Bitcoin in general. But you've got to be able to have a handful of sources, whether they're YouTube uh, sources like us, you know, professional media outlets, or if they're uh, even individual YouTubers out there that are doing uh, a lot more deep dive, you know, on it, go with those as well or look at a variety of different sources. And what I always recommend is don't fall completely into, the, especially when you're talking cryptocurrency, don't fall completely into the cryptocurrency web. What I mean by that is all the media outlets that are just basically just reporting on crypto news and that, because that sometimes can be a little swaying. So let's get into it today. Let's jump over to CoinMarketCap, kind of see where we are. And the volume, it's looking pretty nice today. Let me zoom in on that. Coin market cap, 1.6 trillion. On the market cap, 24 hour volume, 100, nice. And of course, um, Bitcoin holding, this is interesting because Bitcoin has really started to rise. I think only because it's, I think a lot of people are looking at Bitcoin that it's finally come off the floor under 30 and it's now starting to hover around 40K and up. So I think the dominance is moving. This has risen uh, quite a bit over the past week. You can kind of see it right here on the 45%. ETH has kind of dropped a little bit. That was almost 20% this time last week, uh, which is, is interesting. So, and um, GATH is, uh, GAS is a quarter 13 GWAI. So interesting. Hmm. Well, anyway, the point is, is that I think the DeFi projects that continue to move around are going to be interesting to watch. And I want to get into one of those before we start really layering in the uh, the overall, I want to kind of run through some of the news stories that have basically talked about where Polygon is going. Here's a piece, of course, from Finance DS. And this one is kind of fun. It's, you know, they're basically talking about the layer two solution, but mainly that it's continuing its impressive progress as an alternative to Ethereum. And I think this, again, is not a crypto, uh, you know, a crypto journal. Uh, that you might see like on, you know, Coindesk or, you know, Decrypt or somewhere like that. But it does kind of get into where Polygon is going. One thing I, I thought was kind of interesting was this right here. And let me kind of highlight that for you. Uh, Polygon, based on a team developed in India, is one of the first level two layer, uh, first layer two scaling solutions built on Ethereum. Such solutions are needed by users and Ethereum as well at this time as the scalability of the current version of Ethereum continues to remain a big question. Even though Ethereum 2.0 is expected to resolve the problems of scalability. That's what I wanted to highlight here. And the reason for that is as layer two and 2.0 solutions come out on Ethereum, my question is how well does these other DeFi projects hold up to what could be the kingpin and that being Ethereum, especially on uh, DeFi, if and when, I should say when, level or layer two, uh, excuse me, Ethereum 2.0 comes out and we see the kind of improvements that we need 
to really kind of change the game for Ethereum? That's going to be the big question on, on where that is going. The other thing is, is it remains to see, and I want to jump back to this article, it remains a big question on how the adoption of these solutions would be after Ethereum 2.0 comes into existence. So, so to my point, the same patrons as they are and doing right now is going to be in question. I think that's going to be the big one that flows along. Now, because of that, and I want to kind of go to this one, I wanted to jump to Investor Place. And you'll notice that I use uh, a few different sources here. And the reason is I want to give you different mindsets because there's a lot of people that are all in on cryptocurrency like Decrypt or Coindesk. And you're, you're going to get, even though you do get some, I think, somewhat unbiased reporting, um, you do get very centralized insider baseball stuff. And what you need to understand in the marketplace, and it's something that I do, is looking at uh, sources that maybe don't understand it as well. And the reason for that is because remember, mainstream media and its ability to influence tokens, because remember, consumers and consumer investors are what moves token price. Project movement. So the ability for mainstream media to understand what is happening in a token is critical for us to be able to grow token price and these projects to really kind of jump to the next level. So you can kind of see it right here, Investor Place. Price predictions, how high can Mark Cuban take the brilliant Polygon? So this is a big deal. And the reason I wanted to point this out is because when you have guys like Mark Cuban jumping into this, it becomes a different kind of animal. So we learned that Cuban is an investor in Polygon in May, along with simply adding crypto to his portfolio. He is making it known that he's an avid user of Polygon, saying he finds himself using it more and more. Listen, Cuban, you love him or hate him, the point is, is remember, Mark is a tech guy. He's come from technology and his background really in building online media companies. Before he was a Dallas Maverick owner, he was a, a tech guy. So he understands this probably better than most boomers and most people that are out there that are doing investment in this space. And for him to come in and kind of go in the direction of Polygon, to me, it really, really speaks to the quality of what Polygon is doing. And I want to kind of highlight some of the things right here on price predictions. Uh, and that is, uh, speaking on the short term, Prospect Matic is calling the token's upside potential is limited. And this is coming over from FX Street. In the long term, many outlets are very bullish. This is digital coin price. Thinks that Matic can finish 2021 on a value of 226. I think these are low. Uh, wallet investor predicts the token to reach values is 772 by June 2022. Very, very slow growth. And then, of course, you get uh, Gov Capital's June 2022 prediction on pegging Matic for the price of around 939. So quite a bit higher than what wallet investor was doing. But the, but the point is, is you get a lot of non-crypto uh, analysts there looking at where this is going and really understanding kind of, and maybe looking at the TA to a certain extent of what that might be. What I always look at is where is the underlying power of a token? There's two things that happen. First thing is partnerships. That's the key thing that starts to move a token or a project into doing things that are very unique and different. The second thing that has to happen is major wins. That's a big deal, whether you look at Cardano and what they're doing with uh, Alonzo and what they're doing in Africa and what they're trying to kind of move the needle on. Then you've got things like World Mobile Token, who is uh, trying to go into providing cellular service and kind of that grid effect in uh, underdeveloped countries. There's a lot of these underlying things that start to make, um, well, they kind of make the, they don't make mainstream just yet but eventually they'll start making mainstream. When they start making mainstream, it's too late for you as an investor because at that point, mainstream news is on it. And if it's good, you know, the thing is going to go flying, flying high at that point. And if you're not in, you just don't get to take the elevator ride. So understand what you've got to look for are connecting the dots underlying the project. So I wanted to jump over to Mark Cuban's Maverick blog. Now, this is something that Mark does. And this was done on June 13th. And basically he's, he's talking about the brilliance of yield farming and liquidity providing value crypto projects. And what he's talking about here is Polygon. Now Polygon and the DeFi projects in general, but the big thing here is, is what business are they in? The first question you ask, 
is DeFi is the same question you need to ask any business about creating financial relations. What business are they in? So he kind of talks about it. He, he gives you a couple of examples of some DeFi blockchain projects that he placed money in. Polygon, here it is. They're a very simple business that's hard to execute on. Their job is provide tools that enable transactions using their Ethereum Solidity. Smart contracts built on pairing outside parties to take place as quickly and inexpensively as possible, which while still being able to bring them more money than they spend. Big, big point here. The other thing he's got here is uh, companies like Polygon, capital needs, uh, needs are very different. Why? Because rather than building their business exclusive on a cloud computing platform like AWS, their business is decentralized. So I'm not going to argue that the definition of decentralization, decentralization or security or speed here. But the point is, is that the foundation of decentralized is built upon the independent party, usually, usually ca causing miners and proof of work networks like BTC, Bitcoin, or other validators and proof of stake works like Polygon, Matic, or Ethereum, and a few other crypto descriptive words, putting their own capital to provide computing resources and other to support, in other words, to support their own network platform. Basically, he's identifying how this is such a brilliant model, which moves away from the, the traditional structured capital in how these projects get off the ground and where they can really make differences. This is where the original internet started. And for those of you who are in, Cuban was around then. He was there at the birth of the internet. So he saw all of the companies I saw when I was working at Microsoft of how they started, how they created capital, because there wasn't a bunch of VC, uh, you know, uh, you know, helicopter money coming in to these firms. These they had to kind of do their own work, and that's the thing I like about where cryptocurrency is going. So it's pretty brilliant that they're uh, kind of moving in that direction. I just want to kind of point that out. Some other projects that are flocking to uh, Polygon. I want to jump over here now to CoinDesk. DeFi projects continue uh, flocking to layer two solution. Polygon, this is another big one. Uh, Polygon, one of the early projects providing ETH, ETH layer two scaling solution has grown significantly in the past few months. Example, June 13th, automatic sushi swap has more than 15,000 unique active wallets on Polygon, while Ethereum, that number was only around 4,100. That's, uh, that's a huge deal in terms of how these things are gonna develop. And then you can kind of see the the whole point of where uh, Cuban was talking about there. Ave has been working with Polygon since March. Coindesk reported this in order to escape the high transaction fees. So they've done it using layer two. So again, you have all of these programs kind of moving in this direction in where it's going. And then even what you have the co-founder of Polygon based decentralized quick swap said in a phone interview with Coindesk. That's why I think it's a good move that DeFi is moving to Polygon. So this could be a short-term play. And what you have to watch here is the movement of ETH 2.0. ETH 2.0 and Polygon are on a collision course, I believe. And the question is going to be where and can they coexist? It's likely that they can. But will it affect both of them in terms of the overperformance? I think ETH is the more powerful player here. Its future is bigger. It's got a, a, obviously almost half the market cap of Bitcoin. And I think it's got a great opportunity of kind of moving to the next level. So let's jump in to trade the chain real quick for the day and look at Polygon, kind of where they are on the uh, seven day sentiment. Now, sentiment right now is on the low side for Polygon over the last week, but they have had a little bit of an adjustment here. Price point right here on June 12th at $1.22, hovering right here at $1.65, nice increase, but not necessarily growing heavily in sentiment. And sentiment is going to be the key factor on being able to keep and sustain Polygon's pricing point. And that is going to come from releasing projects and programs that are happening around Polygon. Last, I want to jump into TradingView. And on TradingView, uh, we're going to look at sentiment and where amplification starts to move on Polygon. So this is uh, the downslide on Polygon that we had from what was its nice little high right here around May 26th down to the basement on May 21st, which put that price in at about $1.56. It continued to get a little bit of a bubble. Sentiment held on 525 at 60.03. AMP was very low at 31.02. Let me explain AMP amplification for you guys. 
we use a layer of analysis that is a little different than uh, some of the TA tools that are out there. And we've built this over about a decade. We use it in some other industries, but basically what it does is it looks at sentiment and it looks at the quality of the amplification of that sentiment. Meaning if Michael Saylor drops a tweet, how many people does it affect? What kind of amplification does that tweet get? Sometimes it can be dropped by an individual that's not a personality or, or a influencer in any way. In fact, they're just dropping a nugget of good education and it starts to ramp up. That's amplification. Amplification is great because it can start to track out and predict the potential future because you can quantify it by basically just an algorithm that just says, all right, if I'm getting amplification of X right now and the amplification is continuing to grow, you can start to see the, the evolution of it because it takes kind of a life of its own. That's what amplification is. I want to jump back to the chart. You can kind of see Polygon making it slide down here from what was um, May 30th. And then it gets to a new low right here on June 21st, excuse me, on June 5th. And that was at 146, took a little bump and then took another ride down. Here's sentiment again, because we always like to score sentiment on the down stroke. So this was on 610, sentiment was down, 5129, big deal. Right here was a, a, a very low time for uh, Polygon and amplification was also low. And then right here on June thir or 12th, something happened for Polygon. Project started to roll out, uh, Cuban gets involved, he starts to talk and you can kind of see the amplification starts to move things. Sentiment blows up to 63.11 on the 14th. Four days later, that's how much sentiment moved Polygon. And sentiment moves it. And then you look at where the amplification starts, which starts to lift at the highest it's been in the last 30 days at 40.19. So what we have potentially here is a September window where I think Polygon could hit the $10 price tag. Now, that's a huge jump considering that Polygon's setting in at around buck 50 right now. That's almost 7X. Can it do it? The question is key. The question is key here on whether Polygon can match up, one, continue to get things that are coming on their, onto their DeFi platform that essentially have to come over from Ethereum because of the slowness of ETH2. That'll be the key. And that is gonna happen through the summer. So we're gonna see June, July, August, and potentially parts of September really take a hard look at how those projects are rolling in. So the caveat to my $10 price point here is projects, projects, projects that are moving into it. And if Cuban starts to really move on this and we start to see other people start to say, wait a minute, maybe there's an alternative here for ETH. You know, a good example would be if Elon started to do something here, whether you love him or hate him, his recent re love affair with Bitcoin saying, hey, if 50% of the miners can do this, you know, clean, yeah, I'm going to be back in on, on Bitcoin. He's, you know, I don't know about this guy. He's back and forth. He's, you know, he's, it's like a bad girlfriend. <laughs> they're here, they're gone. They're here, they're gone. Anyway, the point being is that the opportunity for Polygon is here. They are at the doorstep of success. And like I said, if you're looking at trying to do or jump onto something, and for all of you guys out there that have been riding Polygon for a long time, and I get all of your tweets, we love your comments, you guys were right. You know, Polygon is a great project. It's proved itself out. You guys were right. It's proved that it can move the needle. And I think now it needs that jet fuel to take it to the next level. And the thing I always fear about some of these um, DeFi projects like Polygon is I feel like they're they're not really OGs, but I feel like sometimes some of these new hot alts kind of take the air out of the market and they don't give these projects like Polygon a little bit of breathing room to really work their magic and do some deals and do some pretty amazing things because all it takes is a couple of, of major project wins and big announcements and a couple of influencers and your your token is is riding like crazy. So if you like what we're doing here on the show, subscribe. That's the best way to help us out. You can hit the subscribe button right now. And of course, share the video to your friends if they're looking at either getting into cryptocurrency or they're trying to do understand technology and how it's moving forward because we do a lot of other stuff on EV and autonomy. Make sure and do that. And of course, if you're listening over on the podcast, subscribe on the podcast. If you found us through just general search, make sure and send us a note too if you have an idea for a show you want to break out 
for us to do a, mon uh, a market mover on it, just send us a note to producer at reverendnetworks.com. You can also hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.